Measuring the ROI of your content is so important, as we all well know. But can you and how do you measure the ROI of your content repurposing endeavors? There's no one size fits all strategy, but there are ways you can measure your repurposed content. So keep listening to find out how. You're listening to the Content 10X podcast, where it's all about content repurposing. I'm Amy Woods, and I'm here to help you maximize your content and find smart ways to get your message in front of more of the right people, whilst also saving time. Let's get started. Hello, and welcome to the Content 10X podcast. I'm Amy Woods, the founder and CEO of Content 10X. And in this episode, I want to look at ways that you can track and measure the ROI of your repurposed content. Now, once you've got your head around the multitude of metrics tracked by measurement and analytics tools and how you can correctly attribute conversions and sales to individual pieces of core content, you might be wondering, how do you do the same for your repurposed content? Because it's such an important part of proving that a content repurposing strategy is a worthwhile investment. So in this episode, I'm going to cover why tracking the ROI of your repurposed content is so important, how to measure your repurposed content, and why you need to consider the opportunity cost of not repurposing. But first, before I get to the main content, just to mention, if you want content repurposing tips and guidance, industry updates, inspiring stories, and exclusive news, delivered straight to your inbox every other week, then join hundreds of marketers, business owners and creators and become a Content 10X insider. Head to content10x.com forward slash newsletter. Okay, back to this week's topic. And as I was saying, a question that I get asked an awful lot is, but how do we measure the effectiveness of our content repurposing? And how do you know if it works? I think as marketers, it's only to be expected that we'd want to know what and how to measure. And if you can't, then some would say, what's even the point? So it is super, super important that you are able to track the ROI of your core content and your repurposed content and find a way to bring it all together. Because these days, if you can't prove to the powers that be that it's worth it in hardcore metrics, then you are going to find it's hard to get the budget needed to make it happen. So while it's not black and white, because it's not the easiest to track things like brand awareness, trust, brand equity, for example. But let me just give you an example that is accessible and, as far as I'm concerned, paints a very clear picture of the powerful impact repurposing can have on your content. So say you do a live webinar and you have 50 people attend live. And let's say another 150 people dial into the recording of the webinar after the live event. So 50 live and 150 after the fact. And then you take the video from the webinar and repurpose it into a YouTube video, a podcast episode, a blog post, multiple social media videos and graphics, and an email newsletter. So what happens then? So your YouTube videos gets 1,400 views, your podcast episodes get 700 downloads, your blog post gets 2,000 unique visits, The social media posts are viewed and interacted with and shared multiple times in a mass, 10,000 views alone. And the email goes to 20,000 people with a 20% open rate. So 4,000 people opened the email. Now, I'm sure you get the general idea I could go on, but let's say that's the repurposing strategy that this company with this webinar follow. So you could say, I recorded a webinar and from the live and post live recording, it reached an audience of 200 people. So 200 people watched that webinar. And let's face it, the context behind that might be actually that I put blood, sweat and tears into getting this month's webinar recorded, liaising with guests, sorting the tech, agreeing the agenda, doing all of the marketing for it. And 200 people watched it without repurposing. And that's where it ends. Or through your content repurposing strategy, as I just explained, your webinar content got in front of 18,000 people. Now, I'd like to reference the podcast episode that I did recently with Jonathan Bland, who is the co-founder of Demand Gen Agency Omnilab. 
And Jonathan gave a similar example in our conversation. And he said something great that I'm going to quote word for word now. He said, not everyone's going to be able to show up at 3pm on a Thursday for your webinar. They're just not. People are busy. So to not give them the opportunity to consume some of that content in a smaller format is crazy. And I agree with him. It is crazy. So you can hear more on that episode if you head to content10x.com forward slash 277. I'll put the link in the show notes, but he talks about exactly how they repurpose and get more views and eyes and ears on their webinars. So I think it's clear that without doubt, you can get your content in front of more people and you can measure that by measuring how your repurposed content performs. Also consider it's not just the vanity metric, some would say, of views and listens and reads, but what did it do for the business as well? So did you get any sales or any sales calls? So you need to make sure you are tracking those measurements too. And it's okay to have content that is purely for brand awareness and won't necessarily lead to those conversions. And then you do need to have that content that is more for lead gen as well. So making sure that you understand the purpose of the content as well. But as I mentioned earlier, it's not completely black and white. After all, it took extra hours to do all of the repurposing. Those extra results didn't happen with no extra effort. Of course they didn't. So you need the skills and the expertise to write that blog post and the email, to select the video clips, to produce a podcast, create eye-catching videos and graphics and so on. That takes a lot of extra time. But I have a few things to say on this. Firstly, consider that repurposing all of this content removes the pressure of coming up with brand new ideas for all of those channels all the time. It helps you, one, to be clear in your messaging across multiple channels and being clearer on your message helps with building your brand and building trust. And two, it helps you to scale on those channels that you choose to scale on. And three, it provides space for ideation, helping you to focus on quality core content and therefore quality repurposed content thereafter. Also consider the opportunity cost of not repurposing and getting on the hamster wheel and creating another webinar that will not be repurposed as well. So let's say you have a set budget and you invest in two webinars, both of which got 50 live views and 150 post-live recording views. So both webinars are seen by 400 people together. Or you use the same budget, 50% on one webinar and 50% on repurposing it. We've already been through the numbers. You'll connect with way more people than 400 people. So it just makes a lot of sense. So in conclusion, it's so important to track the ROI of your repurposed content, which you can do through the same measurement and analytics tools as you track your usual content on the platform that you publish it on. And when you start measuring your repurposing efforts, look at it at a campaign view. So get the data from the core content and the repurposed content and pull it all together and you'll be amazed at the results. Okay, so if you need any help with your content repurposing, we offer a fully done for you content repurposing service for B2B businesses. Just head to content10x.com forward slash services to find out more about what we do and how we might be able to help you. Okay, so that's a wrap. All that's left to say, is thank you so much for listening. Happy repurposing and happy measurement of your repurposing and I'll catch you in the next one.